Okay, another kind of fading. So that uh, brings me to the end of plain earth uh, path loss. So I'd like to talk briefly about uh, another common type of fading called Rayleigh fading. Okay, so far we've talked about um, cases where there are only two paths incident to the receiver. The reason we've talked about such cases is because they're relatively easy to analyze. As we've seen, you can just pull out uh, whatever trig identity, use it, and get, get your answer as far as the, the amplitude is concerned. Rayleigh fading is concerned uh, with scattering. So we remember uh, talking about these modes of, uh, modes of propagation or modes of uh, reflection in built environments, and one of them was scattering. In other words, uh, signals go in all directions. No real coherent reflections. So um, Rayleigh fading is really concerned with the case where you have lots and lots of sin sinusoid. And they're randomly reflected. So there's no particular figure in the notes for this, but just uh, as a... Uh, as a that's a good question, actually. Um, I don't think the atmosphere scatters radio waves so much. Yeah, uh, it's, yeah, it's exactly the same idea. So you look out at the horizon, and, and it's blue, and it's blue because it's scattered. Uh, here we're more talking about, like, um, cities, the built environment. So, uh, You'll have a wave propagating away from the transmitter, and lots of buildings, and cars, and people, and whatnot between, um, between uh, the transmitter and the receiver. And so paths will, there will be all kinds of funny paths through this. Uh, environment, and so you'll get this really strong scattering effect where you've got lots and lots of paths incident at the receiver, and none of them is particularly dominant. So that's, that's the scenario in which, uh, in which Rayleigh fading is, is appropriate. So let's remember that um, um, <laughs> each path, uh, each path looks like for the path. It's taking some random crazy path through here with lots of reflection uh, coefficients, reflection gains, and so on. Uh, so it arrives with some AI sine pi of t plus 2 pi f uh, di over c. So this is, the, this is the frequency which never changes in flight, we assume. Uh, plus some changing, uh, plus the, ch the, the phase change based on the length of the path. So, um, remember uh, sine A plus B is equal to cos A cos B minus sine A sine B. Uh, by the way, if you're worried about all these trig identities, um, I always let you have uh, a personal cheat sheet on the exam that you 
write so you can write down all of these if you like. Um, so this, uh, you can think of this as A sine A plus B. We get uh, AI sine two pi F T plus two pi F D I over C is equal to AI uh, cos two pi F T cos two pi F. Actually, I'm gonna sorry, I'm gonna make I'm gonna reverse that. Cos uh, two pi F D I over C. Cos two pi F D minus AI sine by FDI over C sine by FD. Yes? I think you're right, actually. I think, I, I think this might be the cos identity. Cos A might be. I think you're right. I think that's oh, the cos identity. Cost. But you're right, the sine identity. At some point, when I was writing these notes, uh, I switched from cos to sine. And I think I did not catch this one. Thank you. So that should be sine cos plus cos sine. I think that's right. Is that correct? Thank you. So this becomes sine cos, cos sine. Okay. It doesn't make any difference to the remainder of my argument. This is equation um, equation six. Okay, so let's call this um, AI sine theta i. I don't really care what this distance is, it's, it's random. The amplitude is random, the, dis the uh, distance is random, so therefore this is a random coefficient multiplied by cos pi of t minus AI cos theta i, it's the same theta. Uh, you're right, you're right. Sine two pi of t. So the AI cos theta i and AI sine theta i terms are random. So that's interesting. Um, these values are random, which means that in the end, so if, if I plunk a transmitter antenna and a receive antenna down in a, in a heavy scattering environment, uh, it actually makes a lot of sense that the signal strength that I observe at the receiver would be somehow random uh, related to the, the signal that I transmit. It, it could turn out that all of these thetas line up properly and I get a very strong signal it could turn out that all these thetas line up against me and I get a very weak signal. So it, it makes sense that that would be random. That um, no, it's not um, it's not additive noise, but what it, uh, some people call it multiplicative noise because it can't wipe out the signal. Um, but uh, it's 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 a random uh, it's a random corrupting event. It's, it's, it's similar to noise and that it's corrupting, uh, but it, it uh, how do you compensate for that? Can you use a rule to compensate for that? Uh, basically, uh, there's a number of ways you can compensate for this, um, but we'll talk about that. 